Hi. So in the previous uh, slide, we have discussed about the definition of the verb. So now if I ask um, students, whenever specifically when I ask students the examples of the verbs, they give me, end up giving me the examples like uh, reading, speaking, walking. Now I always say them that these are not the verbs. These are participles. All of them, if you are marking them as the verbs, they are wrong. They are actually participles. They are not verbs. They are our participles. About participles, little later we will, uh, I'll explain you in detail, right? It will take me somewhere around 10-15 uh, minutes class separate. I have to explain you about the participles, right? But right now, always remember, only reading, writing, walking, talking is not the verb. If you mark them as the verb, is walking is the verb or are reading, this is verb. They both are verbs. Rather, we will call them as the verb phrase. But only reading, writing, walking, talking is not the verb. Right? So, if I ask you about the examples of the action verbs. So, what will be the examples of uh, action verbs? Right? So, let's talk about the examples of the action verbs. What are our action verbs? So, read is the verb. Speak is the verb. Walk is the verb. But reading, writing, walking, talking, they are participles. These are not the verbs over here. Clear? Now, verb forms the basis of any sentence. As we know, it will join the subject and the object. So, you will have the first subject. Then you will have the verb and then you will have the object. Now, to find the subject, what I told you is one particular um, uh, like equation type something I told you to remember that how to find the subject of the sentence. To find the subject of the sentence, what we have to do is first we will find the verb, right? Because subject will be always before the verb. So, we'll ask the question either who or what before the verb. You will get a single word answer. Always remember single word answer which is called as the subject of the sentence which will either be a noun or a pronoun right now i want to find out the object and i know my object will be placed after the verb so now what i will do is i have to ask the question first i will find out the verb now after the verb i'll call, ask the question who or what again here also i will ask for a single word answer this single word answer will be of my object right and which will again be either a noun or a pronoun this is the basic which you have to remember right so the slide ka, the point is what how to find the subject how to find the object this i'm teaching you from my very first slide of the nouns topic so find the verb ask the question who or what you'll get a single word answer which is called as subject for finding the object, find the verb, ask the question who or what. After the verb, you will get the single word answer which is called object. Only nouns and the pronouns can act as the subject or the object. Plus reading, writing, walking, talking are participles. About participles, I will teach you a little later. But right now you should understand that they can function as verb. But alone they are not the verbs. Is walking, are reading, verb phrases. Eh? Action verbs, read, write, walk, talk, sing, dance, these are the verbs. Clear? Let's move ahead to the next slide. Now, the verb can be just a word also. Like sent, right? Left. These are the verbs. These are our verbs. They are just one word, right? But what are they? Sent and verb. They are my action verbs. They are telling me what has been done over here. Now, let's find the subject because this is something very important, right? So, who sent a gift? She. She is the subject pronoun. She sent what? A gift. Gift is my object. Who left? They left the party early. Who left? They left. They is the subject. Who? They left what? They left the party. Party is my object. Clear? Let's move ahead to the next slide. The verb can be more than one verb. So, when we have the helping verb plus my main verb, right? Which is my action verb. Together it is called as the verb phrase. That means it could be more than one verb. Is washing is the verb phrase. Have broken is my verb phrase. And subject verb agreement always we have to look for. 
Who is washing his clothes? Rajiv is washing his clothes. Subject is there. Rajiv, Rajiv is washing what? Clothes. Object is there. Now you have broken what? You uh, Who have broken? You have broken. You is the subject. You have broken what? My dreams. That is a, the object. You all will bro break my dream if you don't study. So I don't, none, want, don't want any one of you to break my dreams. I want everybody to get a good grade. Score well and get your dream job. Fine. Let's move ahead. We have a common objective, right? We all have one common dream, common objective and we all are determined to score well in the English section, right? So, let's move ahead to achieve our dreams. Great. Let's move ahead to the next slide. The verb can connect the subject to the object. This is very clear. We know first we will have the subject. Uske baad mein we'll have the verb and then we'll have the object. So, drives is the verb. Who drives? My driver drives. So, driver is the subject. My driver drives what? The car. Car is the object. So, what it is doing? It is joining the subject and the verb. It's connecting the subject and the verb. Simple. Great. Let's move ahead. See, English is a very simple language, I'm telling you. Just you have to understand it. A verb may have the object, may not have the object. Right? So, if the verb is able to convey its meaning without the object. Why exactly you need the verb object? You really don't need the object if the verb is able to convey its meaning without the help of your um, object. So, if I say sun shines, so shines, the meaning is clear. Who shines? The sun shines, right? Shines is the verb over here. It is raining. Is raining is the verb. Now, without even telling anything, we with the help of shines and raining, the meaning is clear. So, once the meaning is clear, it is called as the, like no object is there, right? So, when the object is not there, then these verbs are called as the intransitive verb. In means no or not. So, it doesn't have the uh, object. So, we can say intransitive verb is equal to no object. Because meaning is clear without the object. Now, a transitive verb is a verb which will have the object. It will definitely need a direct object to convey its meaning. So, we can say transitive will have the object. Object is needed. Will be there. Always. Clear? Next. So, a transitive verb must have the object. Without an object, it will not be able to convey the meaning. Right? So, that let's see some example in the next slide. Now, if I say the sentence he cleared. So, cleared is my verb. So, I ask the question, what did he clear? Yeah, I don't know what he cleared. No one knows the answer to this question. So, I definitely want to know what he cleared, right? So, I need a direct object to clarify the meaning. So, meaning is incomplete. It is not clear, right? So, if I say he cleared the exam, now the meaning is clear. He cleared what? It could be he cleared the exam, he cleared the plate of food or something. He cleared the table. When I say cleared the table means he has cleaned the table. When I say he cleared the exam, that means he has passed the exam. Right? So, the meaning changes. Vocab comes into picture over here also. Right? So, Cleared is the verb. Who cleared? He cleared. He is the subject. He cleared what? He cleared the object. His exam over here. Right? Which was very need, very much needed to convey the meaning of the cleared over here. Clear? So, the verb, a transitive verb may have two types of the object. We have the direct object as well as indirect object also. But the object will, the object are, objects are of Two types. The first is direct. Second, you can have the indirect object. So, now to find the direct object, we have asked the question who or what. Now, to find the indirect object, after the object, ask the question whom or for whom. You will get the indirect object. Clear? For whom or for whom the uh, this action has been cleared. So, you can have a direct object as well as you can have the indirect object also. Now, you ask, see who bought, bought is the verb, who bought, he bought, it is the subject. He bought what? He bought a cake. Cake is the direct object. Now, I ask the question for whom? Her. Her is the 
indirect object. Indirect object is the receiver of your direct object. Right? See the other way around. I can say here, her is the object of verb. It could be the object of preposition also. Bought is the same verb. He is the subject. Cake is our direct object. He bought a cake for whom? For her. So her over here is acting as the object of preposition. Clear? She is reading grandma the news. He is reading is my verb. Who is reading? She is reading. She is reading uh, what? She is reading the news. News is the direct object. Now you ask the question for whom? Grandma. Grandma has become the indirect object. Right? The other way around we can say she is reading the news to grandma. Over here to grandma is my prepositional phrase and grandma is the object of preposition. So in the first sentence her is the indirect object. In the second sentence, grandma is the object, indirect object. Now, where it is placed? So, indirect object is always placed between the verb and the direct object. Right? It always, it usually comes before the direct object. So, the structure will be what? You will have the subject. You will have the verb. You will have the indirect object. And then you will have the direct object. This is the structure. Remember it simple. Let's move ahead to the next question. So a transitive verb is the verb which does not have any object. So without the object also the meaning will not be affected. It will be cleared. She smiles. We know the meaning of smile. The dog is barking. Fine. The plane has taken off. Fine. The smiles is barking has taken off. The meaning is clear. Right. We don't really need an object to convey the complete meaning. That is why they are called as the Intransitive verbs, intransitive verb, no object is needed. Just simple rule is there because the meaning is clear. Let's move ahead to the next slide. Now the villagers caught a lion yesterday. So caught is the verb. Who caught? The villagers caught subject. The villagers caught what? A lion. Lion is the direct object. Right? In this first part. Second part we say but it escaped. Escaped is the verb. It is the subject who escaped it. It is understood that the lion escaped yesterday. In this second part, the object is not needed. So, over here, the escape is the intransitive verb. Whereas, the caught is a transitive verb. Because it has got the object over here. Clear? Next one. The auxiliary verb and the helping verb are same. So, the main verb is like the... Main action verb. Before that we can have the action verb, helping verb. The other name for the helping verb is auxiliary verbs. Right? Together the helping verb and the uh, main verb will call as the verb phrase. Right? So now these helping verbs could be any form. They could be the forms of to be or to have. Or you can have the model verbs like can, could, will, would, might, must. These are all the model verbs. Right? Now the common auxiliary or the helping verbs are the forms of to be and to have and do. Right? Each one has got a different uh, form. We will discuss about it. I will tell you about it. But you should know like all these together can form the verb phrase. Right? So helping verbs are the verbs which will help us to complete the meaning of the sentence. Right? Without them the sentence may not be complete. The meaning will not be complete. They help these helping verbs. You know, the name itself is helping. They help us to understand the tense. That when exactly that action has been completed. Right? So it gives us some more information about the action or the state of being when that action has been completed. So I will tell you with that. Say the forms of to be. Right? I always focus on singular and the plural form. So I will focus on that here also. Right? So let's use different colors now. The meaning will be clear with that. Right? So, singular uh, forms of to be, is is singular, are is plural, has is singular, have is plural. This both are in the present tense. Clear? Now, we have the past tense, right? Let's use a different color for that now, right? So, if I use a yellow color, past tense may, was is singular, were is plural, had and had both are same in the past tense, right? Now we have the other forms, right? If I talk about now my 
future tense so will is same for singular as well as the plural right this is the future tense clear now we talk about our models also so if i talk about models the examples of models not about the singular plural but they are same right so we can have can could shall should will would right these are all our uh, models then we have forms of do right so do ke forms are what let's discuss about the do forms also so when i talk about the forms of do it is like the do say you have do right or do is plural form singular of do is does and this is in the present tense then we have did this is the past tense right these are all called as the helping verbs they help us to get some extra information they will always be together with some main verb but sometimes they could be used alone also right so the point of this thing is clear learn this table it's very very useful for you right i've written it with different different colors so that you understand also clear fine let's move ahead to the next class so now he is sleeping so how the verb phrase is formed is is the helping verb sleeping is the main verb i told you participle plus helping verb is the verb phrase so you have the helping verb plus the participle together it is called as the verb phrase now here the participle is acting as our main verb also you can say right so the helping verb of the sentence becomes the main verb of the another sentence if you say it is dark is is the main verb it's a helping verb but right now in this sentence it is functioning as the main verb i always focus on functional aspect of the grammar in the previous sentence it was functioning as the helping verb but if it is alone used over here it is not the helping verb but it is functioning as the main verb right so if you say that this is a helping verb another main verb has to be there to help us to understand the otherwise the verb phrase will not be there otherwise in that case it's it itself will function as the main verb let's move to the next slide the different forms of the to be are what am am is always used with i am is are was were the previous table which we have discussed right so these helping verbs are combined with the other verbs to form the tenses we get to know when the action was completed with the help of the helping verb plus the main verb together if we will have we will know when that action was completed right will some more information we obviously get now is is the helping verb writing is the verb uh, main verb or the participle so you have the helping verb plus participle we also call it as the main verb now what we get to know the helping with the is is in the present tense participle is in the continuous tense so we know that the action is happening in the present time and it is continuous it's going on so has gone has means gone is the past participle over here so this is when that means it has gone just now right it has just action has just now been completed jack has gone with jill to the zoo so that means just now he has gone right so we get to know just now in recent past action is completed it's not the remote past but we are talking about the action which is completed in the recent past so in these two sentences there are two verbs in these sentences one is is writing and the other one has got the has gone is is the helping verb writing is a participle so together it is the verb phrase another one has got the has gone has is the helping verb gone is the past participle both are working as the verb phrase right next sentence the two verbs combine to form the tenses we'll get to know more about it in the first sentence jill is riding an elephant what we come to know it's a present tense because is is in the present and continuous tense it tells us right now the action is going on right jill is still riding the elephant the action is not yet com uh, completed whereas in the second sentence when we say the jack has gone uh, with that means the it's a present perfect tense it tells us the action has been completed right 
in detail we will talk about the tenses in the tense chapter right now we'll deal with only the verbs i don't want you to clutter up with lot of information and then you say i am confused ma'am right that should not be the condition next one now see helping verbs the will not always combine with the main verb to form the tenses sometimes they on their own also they will tell us the tense they really don't need the main verbs help right see i am efficient so it's talking about the present she is lazy present she was tall so here it has become the past right are confused that more than one people are confused this is the present tense i uh, am is the present tense is is again a present tense were upset is right now you are not present in the past you were absent right does she know yes she does so again we are talking about the present over here we can use these helping verbs to put the stress or emphasis also i do like you so that means i am stressing that yes i do like you the next one she does mind what she said yes i know she mind but you want to put a stress that yes she does uh, so the meaning changes the stress changes the intensity or the intended meaning with which you are using it over here right so point is clear they help us to get to know the time when the action has been completed or is going on clear let's move ahead to the next slide now models or the model verbs are also the helping verbs model verbs are used to express the ability what are these model verbs we have discussed i gave you in the table like we can say can could me might right shall should so we will discuss about them like i say i can drive a car can means it is talking about the ability that i have the ability that i can drive a car right i am using can over here to show my ability or talk about my ability now next sentence if we say if you don't leave now you could be late now when i say can ka past tense could that is changed into the possibility see i am not really sure but i know that there is a possibility that if you don't leave right now you 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 could get late right it's not 100% but there is a possibility you may get late you may not get late right so i'm talking about the possibility over here now i will call you this evening now will is like willingness right you are sure right pretty sure you are willing to call next sentence you might like a ride in the roller coaster now might is you are not sure you are giving a suggestion over here you must keep up early tomorrow get up early tomorrow so must is a necessary yeah your compulsion is there you are saying yes it is important for you you must get up early tomorrow you must study hard you must start learning your rules right so in details we can have one separate class where i will tell you about the use of can could may might shall should right will would these are all your models right now it's just the introduction type of the thing or laying the foundation for your tenses class so go through it nicely listen to these lectures twice thrice if it is needed because it's there's no harm in repeating something or revising something twice because as i told you certain things you have to understand certain things you have to uh, memorize now linking verbs they do not tell us what the subject does but what the subject is they talk about the state of being of the subject right so they tell us the complement so if only the linking verb is used then immediately after the verb you will have the subject complement right which says something more about the subject the complicant complement can be could be a word or a phrase or a clause anything it could be most common linking verbs are our forms of to be like am is are was were again linking verb will not have the direct object right and any verb that expresses an act which uh, which shows a action cannot be the linking verb linking verbs are am is are was were if i say remember one example we have done like if i say radha is a teacher in my previous noun chapter i think i have told you so teacher radha is a linking verb over here who is a teacher radha radha is the subject radha by profession is a teacher this is the subject complement because it tells me about the radha that by profession radha is a teacher clear so after the linking verbs you will have the adjective form of the noun that is the subject complement clear now linking verb 
is not the action verb. It will not talk about the action. It's just linking, right? He looked at me. It tells that what he has done, right? So looked is the action verb. It's not the linking verb. She looked as if she was going to cry, right? It does not tell us what she did. It only what appeared to be looking. Looked over here is a linking verb. So the same sentence in one sentence, it's acting as a action verb. Whereas in the second sentence, the same word look is acting as the linking verb. Clear? So again, the functional grammar comes into picture. Now, linking verb is often followed by the adjective or the subject complement. So let's see the same thing. He feels fine. Feels is the linking verb over here, right? So he is the subject. So fine is describing or telling something more about he. So it is an adjective or a subject complement. He feels the fine sand of the beach. Now feel over here. In this condition, he is doing something, right? It's an action verb. Understand the sentence and then decides. In the previous sentence, it was telling us, uh, joining the condition, right? We were talking about the condition of the subject. But in the second sentence, we are telling what the subject has done. It's talking about what action the subject has taken, right? So, we're talking about the state of being. Clear? Next sentence. Next slide. Download our revolutionary app for free AMC.